<laughs> Double fist it. Ah! It was 1980 when I got a job working in a little downtown cocktail bar called Cafe 13. Well, 17 years later, three hours before last call, I was told the bar was closing its doors for good. The sheriff's office was coming in the next day with one of these, these big locks. You know the kind you see on foreclosed properties. Anyway, I was pretty upset. How do you take 17 years and have it disappear? in a heartbeat. So I let the last patron out, good old Mr. Morris, and cleaned up like I always did, wiping the bar down and flipping the stools. I shouldn't have been left alone that night, but I left one stool down underneath a, a dim light where I poured myself a rusty nail. Now I was a big fan of rusty nails back then, and as I sipped my drink, all these memories started flooding in. The bar itself was an old oak bar that was about 150 years old out of Philadelphia. The brass foot rail, oh, it came out of the old fire hall. And that was actually the, 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 the pole that the firemen used to slide down. Then I noticed the back bar. <laughs> it had all these burn marks where we rest our cigarettes when we got busy. Yeah, we used to smoke back then. Times sure have changed, eh? We also had these little brass plaques on the bar with the names of people that dropped into the cafe over the years. There I was reading all the names, you know, these two guys aren't together, and oh, well, there's there's Bill and Harry. Well, they've passed on now, and oh, Johnny over here, he became a millionaire. Oh, <laughs> and, you know, kind of swelled up in my eyes there. After my second or third rusty nail, I found myself staring at all the all the antiques on the bar. That's when I decided to take home a few of these mementos, sort of a keepsake for myself for 17 years of service, you see. On the bar lined up in front of me was the old daffodil gramophone, a brass bulldog, a few old photos that I pulled down from the wall, and oh, and this, this great Diablo bowl. Check it out. <laughs> no, I didn't steal it. Uh, I, I borrowed it from its rightful owner. <laughs> Just for the show. And even a bust of Sir Winston Churchill. <laughs> well, how the hell I was going to get all this stuff home? <laughs> After my third or fourth rusty nail, I decided to wander around the restaurant and say goodbye in all the rooms. It was a three-story building, so it was, took me a while. I was in the kitchen, I was in the washroom, even the beer fridge. I don't know what the hell I was doing in the beer fridge. <laughs> goodbye, kegs! <laughs> oh my god, I, I was getting a little maudlin, you see. I even tried to say goodbye to Helen. She was our resident ghost that occasionally would play tricks on us. You know, a few little pranks. I remember I first met Helen. Um, I'd be working away and, and uh, all of a sudden she'd say, Bruce. And I'd look around. <laughs> Nobody was there. Bruce. It kind of creeped me out. And then later she, she'd go, My name is Helen. <laughs> it did. It really. So it, I told the owners and told the staff, and they all thought I was nuts until one night uh, uh, she spoke to uh, Audrey. She was the owner, one of the owners. Audrey. And then she believed me. <laughs> anyway, I was working this private party upstairs, I remember, and, and I had these dirty dishes stacked up neatly on the table, uh, ready for the dishwasher. I could feel Helen's presence. And when I turned my head, the dishes just flew right off the table and onto the floor and broke. Try explaining that one. I yelled at Helen that night and told her to leave. I was pretty pissed. You know, she left and she never spoke to me again. Well, back at the bar again, I poured myself another double sympathy and started feeling guilty about taking all this stuff I collected, you know, to take home with me. So I put it all back. At this time, the sun was coming up and I decided to leave. As I was walking past the wine cabinet, I grabbed a couple vintage bottles of wine and <laughs> that was my memento. Tracing the history of the rusty nail is somewhat fuzzy. Kind of like that last night I spent at the cafe, but it's often credited to those inventive bartenders in New York's 21 Club in the 1960s. 
These were the same guys that gave us the B&B &B cocktail. That's Benedictine and Brandy. So why not the DNS, as it was known? Drembuin Scotch. <laughs> but even earlier, as far back as 1937, it made an appearance in England and was credited to one F. Benneman. It wasn't called the Rusty Nail. It went under the name Biff. <laughs> B-I-F. <laughs> Biff. Butthead. That's short for the British Industries Fair. That's a horrible name, Biff. Hey, <laughs> give me a Biff, man. <laughs> Apparently it was a drink uh, made to mark the occasion of a trade show. After that, the cocktail kind of disappeared for like 20 years. Sometime in the 1960s, it pops up with a new name. It was called a little club number one after a ritzy posh bar in New York where all those showbiz types would hang. In the Midwest, it went by the name of a knucklehead. <laughs> Can you imagine going to the bar and saying, hey knucklehead, give me a knucklehead. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> in the Pacific, South Asia, American Air Force officers called it a MiG-21 after the supersonic jet fighter aircraft. Now we don't exactly know who named it the Rusty Nail. But finally, in the mid-1960s, the cocktail's name was nailed down when Gina McKinnon, the chairwoman of the Drambuey Company, gave the Rusty Nail her endorsement in the New York Times. The Rusty Nail gained tremendous popularity in those years because it was said that the Rat Pack was fond of the drink. The Rat Pack? <laughs> you know those guys. There was uh, Frank, Dino, uh, Sammy, Peter, and Joey. Those guys were great. Love those guys. I don't make a lot of rusty nails in the bar these days. Maybe it's gone into hibernation again. I still drink them occasionally. And if you've never had one, you should give it a try. It's smoky and sweet and makes a great after dinner simmer. Let's make one. The rusty nail. <laughs> Let's make this thing. I'm gonna make uh, this drink the way I used to drink them ice, and scotch whiskey. Now, uh, this is a wonderful little blend, the famous grouse. Uh, you could use uh, a, a single malt scotch as well for a smokier drink, but personally, I like the blended scotches in my rusty nail. So two ounces. Beauty. And of course, Drambuie. Drambuie is a unique blend of aged scotch whiskey with a secret combination of spices, heather honey, and herbs. It's a sweet liqueur infused with saffron to give the liquid its rich golden color. Its origins can be traced to a recipe created for Charles Edward Stewart, AKA Bonnie Prince Charlie, by his royal apothecary in the 18th century. It became the, the prince's personal draft as he drank a few drops each day for strength and vitality. It has been a closely guarded secret ever since. With a blend of grain and selection of the finest Speyside and Highland malt whiskies, Drambuie offers a unique taste experience that's deliciously potent at 40% alcohol volume or 80 proof. The name Drambuie is derived from Scots Gaelic, Andrem Batich, and means the drink that satisfies. It's voluptuous, mellifluous, and full-bodied, perfect for any time sipping. Half to three quarter ounce, or less, depends how dry you like it. That's my kind of rusty nail. And stir it up. Oh yeah. There's the way I used to make them. And uh, your first sip <laughs> is stiff. Oh yeah. Well, let's make it another way. Shaker glass full of ice, two ounces of scotch, <laughs> same damn recipe, half an ounce to three quarter ounce of Drambuie, and we're just gonna stir it up. And you know, the reason I'm doing it this way, I mean, essentially it's the same drink that I just made, but this gives you the dilution without waiting. Grab a new rock glass, a little bit of ice, and we're just gonna strain it out over fresh ice. Oh yeah. Sweet.
yeah, I kind of like this better, you know. And why not, if you're so inclined, I never used to, but this changes everything. A little rind of lemon, oh yeah. That is so smooth. This takes a while to get to this point. Oh, that's good. It's a little sweet, a little smoky, not too much though. And I taste the honey and the complexity of the, the drambuie coming through. Mm. And another thing I know from experience, drinking one rusty nail is like drinking two or three other types of cocktails. It really kicks you in the face. I love it. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> make one. They're good, yeah. Mm. And just give it a little, it's hard to say some words sometimes. And just give it a little, a little. And give it a, give it a little stir. And give it a little stir. Little, 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 little. And give it a and stir. And stir it up. And stir it up. Oh yeah. Hey, I got my pork pie hat on, you know. I think we, I think we need to bring these things back. They're, they're kind of funky cool in a weird way. Anyway. Hit the subscribe button and watch some of my other videos because I think they're kind of screwed up and well worth watching. Ha! See you later. <laughs> Gotta go.